I'm John Batchelor, Lost in Space. This is Hotel Mars, Episode N. Mars. Is there life on Mars? We want the final answer. Fossil life will do. Real life is spectacular. I'll accept algae. However, right now, the question is unknown, unanswered. And what is to be done? Curiosity on the surface of Mars and Api were not built for testing for fossils. We're not built for finding organics. There is another Mars rover planned for 2020, and that will have parts that speak to astrobiology. It will collect samples for a possible return, lander return mission, but still not directly answering the question. Therefore, Dr. Space, David Livingston joins me tonight. Good evening, David. And good evening, John. How are you? I am pleased to go to the surface of Mars. Thanks to your and my guest, Chris Carberry, Executive Director of Explore Mars Incorporated. And this is the Mars ExoLance Project. You can all find it by putting up Mars ExoLance because they're crowdfunding right now the mission. They've just started and you can contribute and participate. We'll let Chris explain the ambition. Chris, a very good evening to you. Congratulations. What is ExoLance? What are you going to do with it? Well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Well, ExoLance was conceived of last year when we found out that the Mars 2020 rover was not going to carry any equipment that would actually search for current life on Mars. Uh, ourselves and some scientists at NASA and, and industry wanted to find a way to pressure NASA to actually look for life on Mars, current life on Mars. The problem is most experts believe that if there's life on Mars, it'd be below the surface. So through these discussions, we came up with a novel concept, bringing back a concept that was used back in the 90s, but not for this purpose, using penetrator probes to get below the surface of Mars, between one and three meters below the surface of Mars, whereas we'd have a much better chance of finding uh, life you know, below the surface, away from the radiation on the surface. And so we'll be utilizing these small uh, penetrators, which are basically utilizing um, military technology, basically bunker-busting technology, but putting them to peaceful uh, purposes to search for life. David? Uh, good evening. Uh, Chris, how do, you, how do you do this, and uh, is NASA going to let you take your penetrator probes on a NASA mission to Mars? Well, that's a good question. Now, that's the big challenge, and what we're doing over the next year and what we're trying to raise money for with this crowdfunding is due to the proof of concept, show that not only can we get the depth that we need to search for life, but also that the G-loads on impact aren't going to destroy any science equipment or the communications or the power. Once we prove that concept, we want to try to start selling it to NASA or other space agencies. And we have a novel approach, whereas we wouldn't actually add any mass to the mission, and that sounds unrealistic. But with, like, for instance, MSL or the 2020 rover, they both, you know, MSL carried ballast. When it was coming in entry, descent, and landing, it actually had to shed this ballast. Same thing will happen with the 2020 rover. So we're actually proposing, and we're going to be investigating also with some of this money, whether it would be uh, possible to replace some of that ballast with our penetrator probes. And since they already have to carry that weight, and they have to shed that weight coming in during the entry. And so that would be a perfect way, if it would work, to be able to add the science to a mission without actually adding any mass to the mission beyond what it already has to carry. You have a tungsten bar. You release it, and it drives into the surface of Mars, is the theory. And then what? What's inside the tungsten bar that can do any testing? Well, it basically, we, we have numerous options. Now, there are, they've done a lot of advancement on basically what they call lab-on chips. They're able to actually do the science with chips. So people always think you're going to have a science payload. They're hit, hitting the surface at that speed. Everybody's thinking of these little glass tubes. But that's not necessarily what they'd be doing. So we're actually going to spend the next year or two also investigating these payloads. Now, we have some very um, impressive help on this, 
including um, Gil Levin, who did um, experiments on the Viking lander. We have uh, Chris McKay uh, from NASA Ames helping us out, advising, and who also has suggestions on what might be the proper payload on this. But they all agree that we actually can do this. It shouldn't be a problem, you know, placing one of these experiments, you know, at the very tip of the penetrator. David? What type of life are you looking? Are you simply looking for organics? Are you looking for microbial life, fossils? What are you looking for? <clears throat> microbial life. You know, it's uh, the, the big question is if we were to find microbial life, you know, what is the origin of it? Is it the same type of life that we have here on Earth? Or would it represent a second genesis? Now, that's a particularly big question for the, uh, particularly the scientists we have involved because. You know, you probably heard the theories that um, the life on, if there's life on Mars, it might be related to the life on Earth, be, with you know cross pollinization between the planets. Since you know Mars has had an extremely volcanic past with huge volcanoes, it would regularly uh, spew out rocks and boulders from the planet, which could have carried microbial life to Earth, you know, and vice versa. So the big question is, if there's life on Mars, did it have the same genesis as the life on Earth, or did it have a second genesis? And if it did have a second genesis, what would that mean for, what would that imply for life in the rest of the galaxy or the universe? Having two side-by-side planets, uh, having separate genesis for life. The, you're crowdfunding this at Indiegogo, and explain how people can participate, Chris. Well, if they go for, you know, two options. They can go to our website, exploremars.org, and just, you know, the Indiegogo link is right there, or just go to Indiegogo and search for Exolance, and there are multiple different options. It doesn't matter how little people donate. They can donate as little as ten dollars even one dollar if they wanted to upwards of you know twenty thousand plus but anybody can participate in this and they can donate and there's also we offer a lot of different incentives as well for the lower levels they can get mission patches stickers they can get signed books you know they can even come and watch the um test for you know for a larger sum of money as well or go out to you know get um, a tour of a a cave uh, by Dr. Penny Boston at New Mexico Tech, who's one of the best experts on um, Mars, Mars cave analogs. So there are lots of cool incentives as well, but anybody can go on and donate as much or as little as they like, but they can participate in this and help us with a potentially historic mission. David, one more question. Go ahead. Uh, Chris, on the big picture, with all the stuff going on in the world, why are we so focused? Why do we care about finding life on Mars? Well, I think, you know, this is the question a lot of people ask, but I I think people are interested in it. I think we really would be blind, blinding ourselves if we weren't interested in what's happening in the next planet. It really is our neighborhood. And we've been, this has been a question humanity has been asking for hundreds of years. You know, we are interested. And so, so it's hard to say why it's important, but we are interested when we did a poll last year with Boeing we commissioned a poll you know over 70% of the american public you know supported mars exploration the, the big, biggest reason why was the search for life so i could go off and you know we don't have time for me to mention all the reasons why it's important but i think the biggest reason is there is really strong support in the public. We just have to show the public that we're actually doing something, that we have a real plan and we plan to explore. Chris Carberry is executive director of Explore Mars Incorporated. It's called the Mars Excellence Project. Indiegogo has a crowdfunding page up for everyone to participate. David Livingston, Dr. Space of the Space Show. I'm John Batchelor, Hotel Mars, episode N.